Hi there and welcome back to the last day of our journey through the chakras. Um, what a journey it's been. Whew. It's actually going to be a nice moment for me to paint I think. It's been quite a, it felt like a very busy morning this morning so this is going to be a nice bit of calm for me. What a, a day it was yesterday with this painting. It was very, very interesting. <coughs> what was being shown and I think it really helped to show the power of intuitive expression and how things can seem like it's nothing but then we actually find the meaning of it as we go through the painting and I think you know that's so much like in real life that we don't always know why something has happened and that can be you know good or bad um, or negative or positive situations but it's only when we look back on a situation and that we see how that fitted into our journey that there's so many parallels with painting and with life. And it's really about trusting the process and know that at some point that moment in time will reveal itself to you and you'll be able to understand of what part that played both in your life and in the painting. So today we're in the crown chakra, the, the last one. I have so many more ideas for, for taking this, this chakra journey and working with it in different ways in the group. And then I've also got ideas for other courses as well coming in. So obviously it won't be the last time that we'll be working together. And just to say, you know, um, I've also put in that offer in the group if anybody decides to um to um buy the uh oh my my brain has absolutely gone so it's been such a morning um yeah to to, to invest in the oh goodness the family essentials kit with the, the the home essentials kit with the 10 essential oils and the the diffuser that you will actually have access to the intuitive expression course i will actually put a video in about about what the course is about but um the way i do my courses this course is for eight weeks and it takes you through a journey of painting and through your life and how it transforms your life you understand why we do what we do in the the actual painting what the reasons for each um, element of it and then i'll take you on a journey through it and it's incredibly transformative somebody just written to me this morning said nikki you know thank you so much for your painting course you've literally changed my life so i'm not the same person that i was from doing from doing them because it releases so many emotions and and beliefs it helps us to see where we're where we're working or where, where we need to work in our life and so during this eight weeks we have a weekly group call where we get together and we talk about our experiences and then in the group I put in um, the, the weekly assignment if you want the weekly activity to do and some text to read and then in the weekly calls then we come together and talk about it and these eight weeks you know people tend to work through their own time not everybody you know follow through at the same time because life gets in the way so I'm extremely flexible on on how the work is done and how long it takes and that is the same with every single one of my courses I'm definitely not a person say okay you know you, you have to do this and that and that and it, okay in eight weeks it's shut it's closed the door is closed it's not like that um, it's a really beautiful course and in all the course I've created what is also beautiful is the community that's created and the connections through that so and those connections have really stayed all the way through and it's just a, such a beautiful beautiful experience so I'm going to get together with <clears throat> this last moment and I know it's Sunday so I think many people will also be um, involved in family and church activities etc so not to worry you can still watch this on the live so I'm going to have my my cards here and as I just close my eyes I'm going to ask these cards to show me the affirmations that will 
speak to me and are for my highest good and potential. And I'm going to go for that one and I'm going to go for that one. So the first one, we, we are one. I am blessed to be part of the one. I honour and cherish my brothers and sisters, past and present, future who journey with me. Difference and polarity are not a threat, but an alternative view and experience. I embrace a shared experience of myself and others as eternal beings. I like the end one here. I find that a very, very beautiful one. So I'm going to go for that. I embrace a shared experience of myself and others as eternal beings. And then this beautiful, interesting thing, actually. I've just had the, the ankh tattoo. Um, lovely. Allow the light of the universe to shine through you. Trust in your inner knowledge, inner knowingness and guidance. Spirit always loves and supports you. Open yourself to the intelligence, purity and grace of consciousness and resonate in all of its possibility. And I like this one as well. It just feels so beautiful and pure. Allow the light of the universe to shine through you. And you know, with the crown shackles, what I wrote in a group about, it's also about beliefs, is limiting beliefs. And how they stop us from actually um, being in total connection with our soul and with the divine. And how, you know, the limiting beliefs actually separate us from, from the actual divine potential. And so for this, allow the light of the universe to shine through you. It's like really allow that light to be in its absolute fullness, to allow that complete potential to, to come through. And now, um, with the oil, so I've, I've chosen a, quite a selection today. Frankincense that we've already worked with, which is the oil of truth, unveiling the truth. And also it's a fabulous one for, for working with, with meditation as well. Arborvitae, the, um, like the tree of life, Arborvitae is really about trusting in the divine, that we don't have to... Um, to work hard to to you know to move forward in life it's really allowing the divine to flow through us spikenard which is the oil apparently that mary magdalene anointed jesus's feet with is the oil of gratitude which is a big part with the the crown chakra as well the the practice of gratitude roman chamomile is the oil for really helping us remember our spiritual purpose and why we're here on earth. Manuka really helps to shift our vibrations incredibly and lifts us up to the divine. This all we can't actually get in Europe, we can only get it in New Zealand, but I was actually beautifully gifted with this oil. Um, yes, it really does uplift you to the divine. Zender Queen is about releasing... Um, it's a blend and it helps to release limiting beliefs as we're going through changes and transformation. It helps to shift those stagnant beliefs. Tulsi, otherwise known as Holy Basil, um, another incredibly spiritual oil. It's another one I embalm my um, shamanic drum with, a spiritual integration. So it really helps us to, to align to, to spirit. And then sandalwood, which we've also worked with earlier in the week of sacred devotion. So really, um, it's, uh, it's allowing us to work, it's allowing us to raise ourselves to the high levels of consciousness and the divine. So I shall go through these at the end. Um, but they're very, very powerful oils. I think this is going to be a beautiful layer to be working on. And so the crown chakra is really with um, the purple colours and white. Both colours are, are used. Uh, I don't have my plate. Just one moment. I didn't have my plate to put my paints on, which is not a good, <laughs> a good idea. And we'll see where this, this one takes us today. 
Now, I really hope that you've enjoyed this week. It's been, um, let's get the white to come through. It's been a, a really lovely journey. If, if it's, you know, it's, there's so much more. I've, I can obviously talk about the chakras, but I thought it was a, a nice introduction and a gentle way and, and really just to give you a gateway into wanting to uncover more and discover more about about the chakras. And I think I want to be putting in the middle today this Roman chamomile. It really pours from here. And also Zender Queen. I'm feeling pulled. To breathe in. I just spend a few moments just to connect to the board and ask it to show me anything needs to be shown for my highest good and allow me to live up to my highest potential and for the divine to work through me. Interesting, this board is still slightly sticky. That just shows us how much paint is on my board already. Right, let's take us on the journey through the crown chakra. And I hope you're having a lovely Sunday wherever you are in the world. I'd love to know where you all are. So please do put in the comments as well of where you are in the world. Here in France, it's been a very, very windy day today, incredibly windy. And being a Libra, the wind is really my element. It really fuels me with the element of air. And I think it's also bringing in, because we have the, the partial eclipse and the new moon coming in, but I feel the energies are already being felt from this. It's lovely to see that the colours coming through with the blue and the purple. And it's really nice as well seeing how other people are living this through their, their painting experience. I'm really enjoying seeing people sharing their art in the group. Hi Jill, lovely to see you here. I'm feeling I need to put some toolsy holy basil. I'm actually going to be putting into some more purple paint. Man of Tulsi is just gorgeous. So 
And it's like I was saying just earlier on in the video for those who who joined after. The yesterday was a, a great lesson in trusting the process that we don't always know what things mean until after. And this is why when, when you're doing your own painting, take a picture of the layers because sometimes we don't always see it, but when we go back, um, we understand what that layer was trying to tell us. And it's like right now, <laughs> I don't know why I've been drawn to draw this shape. It almost looks like the CND sign. Peace and love, maybe. But it feels very, very strong. It, sometimes I just get these feelings like they're trying to tell me something and I really get this this urge like right now I feel like I'm being I'm having the pressing into me like can you see it can you see what what we're trying to tell you and I'm going like I don't know <laughs> that also feels like a person as well I'm just going to turn this around and see So again, if any of you have any ideas, it just feels very symbolic today. You want to put in some spikenard. Yes, peace and love, peace for us all. Yes, I really feel that, Jill. I think there's definitely that in there. So as I said, spikenard is the oil apparently that Mary Magdalene anointed Jesus' feet with. It's quite a greeny, greeny oil. Hi Valerie, good to see you here as well. And it kind of feels like which, <coughs> whichever way they're wanting me to, to draw it is like <laughs> I'm just going to dry this a six pointed star as well got emotion coming up yeah there's quite a bit of emotion coming through that this white one does not make a mess everywhere <laughs> beautiful oil it almost smells like leather and it really upholds the person's vibration or whoever's using it or even just holding the bottle it really helps to raise your vibration I just wish I could get more of it over here but now it's only available in in New Zealand this one anyway one of doTERRA's And 
some Zendocrine because that's an oil that's been calling me for a couple of weeks. Interestingly, I had um, I've got one knee that's it may be slightly arthritic, I don't know, but there's a pain in my left knee, and I had a look about knees, and it comes out with a variety of uh emotions to work with if i just change if i can find what it says but it actually comes out about limiting beliefs j knees flexibility moving forward blaming self controlling negative habits stubborn and bitter so I had a look at this and thought, negative habits, this is one that's still coming up for me. So then um, I went into the emotions of negative habits. And incidentally, the left side of the body, before going to negative habits, negative habits is endocrine. So then I looked up about Zendocrine and yes, it's all about um, reawakens vital energy, assisting discover new energy, encouraging release of physical and emotional toxins <coughs> and also self-sabotaging behaviours, so negative beliefs. And I just, this is why I love this book because it really helps us to um, yeah, like it was endocrine, it was perfect, and it's really and it, it has it's also been about, yeah, but the left side was also about um, what's stopping you from moving forward, um, what's keeping you small, where are you frightened of success? And I was like, oh my goodness, I did just so what I'm going through right now and what I've been working on. And so, there's that negative belief of keeping myself small and um, frightened of a su success. So the, the Zender Queen is really there to to help. Hmm. <laughs> it's it's so funny when I'm I just feel guided to to paint something. And I've no idea what's coming through. I, th I thought there's that snake pattern again that has been coming through in the week. But I don't know if you can see what's actually coming through here. But to me, it's the yin and the yang. Now that's the, the yin and the yang. Obviously up the complete oneness, which was interesting because that actually came up on my card was about oneness. And it you know that the yin and the yang can be can be so much, it can be yeah, the the all encompassing, it could be the, the physical that everything is connected. That one with the divine and the divine is, is within us. Which then brings me back to this thing about the beliefs that when we're not trusting in ourselves and, and when we, we doubt ourselves, with the, we're doubting the divine. And this is why I say that the, the um, limited beliefs are also connected to the crown chakra. When we realise that what we're doing is is doubt in the divine, and uh, we become so aware of that divinity. 
We think, well, how how can we how can we not trust the divine? How can we judge that? How can we keep ourselves small when the divine, it you know, is is here to 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 work through us to express itself through the through the human form. And with the yeah, this this really does yeah okay okay I'm gonna do it. Um, with the, the yin and the yang, you know, it's it's like the the divine within the human body, and the human body with it within the divine. The ah oh yes, <laughs> that was so weird because I I just felt like oh am I going to be doing a spiral? It's like no, no I'm not going to spiral. I'm going to go this other way, and then I felt like it was a path going through, and then I felt like it was a serpent, and then all of a sudden the. I never know what I'm actually going to do next. Well, I don't know where it's going, but I'm. It's almost like I'm told the next step to do. Just bring in that next bit, and so I follow it, and then I suddenly see what what's coming, what's coming in. Hi, Diane. Lovely to see you here as well. Yeah. So we we've had. I don't know if you saw before, Diana, but we've also had the CND, well, the CND, but the peace and love symbol, and now the yin and the yang. Even if it's not completely the yin and yang, but the the feeling is there. Unless there's anything else that anybody can see within this. Whew. And we're not finished yet. And once again, you know, it's, it's about letting go of these layers because I love this. I might actually have to take a screenshot of the um, of the video when it's done because I'm, I'm also loving the, the blue that's coming through the purple. But I know there's, there's still more to come. I know there's still more to come. I'm going to breathe in some more Zendocrine. I feel like the stuff that's needing to be to be worked through on that. And the sandalwood. Uh where do we want the sandalwood? Okay. I'm putting sandalwood again in white. So some people, when um, when they paint, some people use just one oil for one layer. I tend to go between different things of using, you know, two or three oils, if you've probably seen in, in different colours. So there's two or three oils in one layer. It's really all just what you're called called to do. There's no right or wrong way within Chibatif that there's guidelines, but there's it's yours. It's yours to, to, to do what you want with, really. Right, I'm gonna go paint with my left hand. So painting with your left hand, when you're in that perfection of trying to do something, painting with the left hand or painting with your non-dominant hand, I would say, will take you out of that perfection because you know you're not gonna be able to get it right with your dominant hand. You just know that it's just not gonna gonna work, so it it helps you to let go, and also that the the left hand is connected to the right brain, which is 
the the feminine which is the um the intuition the feeling etc i also like to say it's also in your heart whereas the, the left brain is more within your head and so painting with the left hand also brings you into the intuitive part so it it kind of frees you up and it's also you know especially for rest especially for right handers it's the hand you don't normally use so it opens up to new, uh, oh, i can't speak today it opens you up to new possibilities now interestingly just as a, an antidote when i was antidote no <laughs> oh goodness um when i was 16 17 and i was doing my exams at school i broke my right arm roller skating and so i had to do my exams with my left arm didn't have to they gave me the choice and i decided to try it and i did and so i learned to write with my left hand and I just wonder what that did to my brain. Maybe it stopped me from speaking like I can't do at the minute. <laughs> but I also felt as well that during my life, come to think of it, there was a lot of balancing going on because I've been, um, I was a biochemist. I worked in labs, research lab and hospital labs, very scientific. And now I'm in the arts. And the healing art so much more right brain but i also felt that that rebalanced me it helped me to see the the, the two sides and you know the the same with my hands that i was right-handed but i i chose to do my exams in my left hand It's actually look purple in the tube, but it's slightly more blue than purple. That's five there. Bonjour, Rachel. Good to see you here. Yeah, I don't know what this is. Often I, I put a lot of water on my brush, but I think I'm needing to. What's interesting is, is very similar shapes are coming up all the way through this painting. it's the same it's the same shape that's coming through again <laughs> I definitely wanted to get the message across
So I wrote to you before, butterfly energy. Ooh. Um, we had the, the, the peace and love sign before that came up, and I'm seeing it again here as well. Yes, butterfly, I see that too, totally. Transformation. And then we've had the yin and the yang. I don't know about where you are, Rachel, but it's so windy here. It's incredible. It feels like there's, there's change in the air. <laughs> Why does that surprise me, Rachel? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Now, isn't that... Oops. Hang on a minute. Uh... How do I turn this around? There. Yeah. yeah, why doesn't that surprise me somehow? Winds of change, yeah, exactly is what I said. I love wind. It really is my element. I could, I could be out in it all day. How interesting. And for you, Rachel, with the same signs that were coming up, what did that make for you? Was it the butterfly energy? Was it more about this peace and love or... <laughs> Dear Medicine, wow. Butterflies. Hmm. Right, white with the Roman chamomile. Goodness, that Roman chamomile just gushes out. That's a Roman chamomile doing something for me. I'm just trying to put in some more sandalwood, but I think, yeah, I'm almost at the end of my bottle on this one. interesting with the um this paint is the the noise of the brush it's echoing the wind too much of a coincidence i also got the Spiral of life tree energy. Oh, the <laughs> oh wow.
Yeah, it's definitely not a coincidence, is it? Yeah, it's lovely, Rachel, when when you you say about that because it also um, is very comforting, really, to know connecting to great mother. Um, that you know that uh, I've said this before. There's so much more going on in these paintings than 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 painting. There is an alchemy that's happening. There is a something so much bigger. And it's interesting you said about connecting to Great Mother because I was going to pick Mur today and I didn't. And I'm just wondering why I was avoiding it. So Mur, which is also connecting to the Great Mother. I really love this journey of just seeing how the, the shackles have played out. And it's interesting with all these little like bumps and nodules, it feels like everything that's being pulled around in the in the wind 
is definitely wind of change. Yeah, the other videos are all up. Um, I've hashtagged them with lives. So you can have a look and also the different chakras. So yeah, they'll be up. And as always, what I love to do at the end of my paintings, I can find it. Touches of <coughs> of the bronze. Time just seems to have flown on this one today. My goodness. Where did the hour go to? I do not know. Blown away by the wind, I think. And there we have it. Now this is a final, the final one. I may just do some um, final touches to it in the week, just to bring out a bit more colour. And I'm still loving where the, the the turquoise is really showing through. And there we have the the last of the chakras. So yeah, that was so interesting, Rachel, that you've you've had 
it, it really doesn't surprise me anymore what happens between the two of us um but yeah with the the peace and love sign and the yin yang and then the um as you said the the, the the feminine as well the feminine path the spiral butterfly absolutely beautiful so the oils that i used there's quite a few of these today um so if i go into tulsi which I think was one of the first ones I used, also known as Holy Basil. So Tulsi is a sacred and highly valued herb in India. It is considered indispensable as nothing compares with its majestic qualities. It has a host of beneficial uses, including being a powerful adaptogen for many body systems, acting to balance and restore areas that have become weakened or blocked. It enhances prana or life force energy and restores an energetic flow for the healing body, mind and spirit. Tulsi aids in harmonizing the conscious and unconscious mind. This unified energy meets in the center or heart of one's being. This exceptionally high vibration oil shifts negative mental and emotional states almost instantly. It is excellent for individuals feeling overcome by stress and emotional dysregulation. It penetrates the deepest emotional wounds and offers an invitation to heal what remains unresolved or previously unreachable. This oil is a powerful alley for healing the heart and choosing into one's emotional work. Tulsi's greatest influence is on the spiritual and energetic plane. It reveals the often unseen strain of living out of alignment with one's spiritual purpose. It reminds individuals on a soul level of the purpose which existed before they manifested physically on this earth. It helps them realise their resistance to life and spiritually integrate for the full actualization. Tulsi is an indispensable aid in spiritual awakening, which is exactly why I chose it for the crown chakra. And then moving on to uh, Roman chamomile because of the connection to the, uh, the spiritual purpose. Roman chamomile supports individuals in discovering and living their true life purpose. Regardless of what someone does for a living, they can find a purpose and meaning in life. Purpose isn't defined simply by outward actions of individuals. It is housed within their heart and soul and radiates out to the world. As individuals live from the centre of their beings, they find power and purpose that is indescribable. They also feel calmer and more at peace. Roman chamomile assists in shedding the meaningless activities that consume lives, so individuals can focus on a more fulfilling work, even the work of their own souls. This oil assists in feeling connected to and supported by divine helpers and guides and calms insecurities about following one's spiritual path. When in doubt, Roman chamomile softens a personality, easing the overactive ego mind. It restores confidence in doing what they came to do this earth to do. People fear, fearfully believe that if they do what they love, they will end up destitute. Roman chamomile reminds them to do what they love to experience true success. By canard. Some really powerful oils here spiritually, my goodness. Spy canard encourages true appreciation for life. It addresses patterns of ingratitude where individuals see themselves as targets of bad luck or victims of their life circumstances. This perception can often lead to feelings of blame and anger. Spikenard encourages the soul to surrender and accept life exactly as it is. It invites individuals to let go and find appreciation for all of life experiences. By opening the soul to acceptance and gratitude, Spikenard assists individuals in seeing the deeper meaning in their lives. It supports them in feeling joy and happiness for other people as well for themselves. It invites individuals to expand by fully letting go of resistance, anger and blame. Gratitude is an expression of complete acceptance and abundance. A grateful person is content with what they have. Spikenard teaches individuals to be grateful for their challenges as well as their blessings. It also assists individuals in transcending their sorrows through being grateful for their present life circumstances. Through complete surrender and acceptance, the soul may be brought into peace and harmony. Uh, sandalwood, which I think we've already seen. Sandalwood assists with all kinds of prayer, meditation and spiritual worship. 
It teaches reverence with respect for the deity. This oil has been used since ancient times for its powerful ability to calm the mind, still the heart and prepare the spirit to commune with God. Sandalwood teaches of spiritual devotion and spiritual sacrifice. It invites individuals to place all material attachments on the altar of sacrifice so that they may truly progress spiritually. This oil asks them to, to assess where their hearts are and challenge them to reorder their priorities to be in alignment with the divine will. Sandalwood assists in quietening the mind so that individuals may hear the subtle voice of the spirit. It raises them into high levels of consciousness. Sandalwood assists one in reaching beyond their current confines and belief systems. For those who are ready to leave behind attachment to fame, wealth and the need for acceptance, Sandalwood teaches true humility, devotion and love the divine. For me, that really speaks totally about the crown chakra. Absolutely. Um, as it's bringing in the humble spiritual devotion, spiritual clarity, still surrender, connect to the higher consciousness. That is just one fabulous oil. <clears throat> okay, wonderful, Rachel. I will see you hard. See you soon. Yes, by canard. Yeah, enjoy your day, the rest of your day. Uh, what did I just say? I'm going to go through. Um, no, that was it. Myrrh oil nurtures a soul's relationship with its maternal mother and with the earth. This all supports individuals who have had disturbances with the mother-child bond. Whether it's division between the child and biological mother or mother earth herself, myrrh can help bridge the gap and heal the disturbance. This division of lack of attachment may be related to adoption, birth trauma, malnourishment, experiences of abandonment or other childhood issues. Myrrh helps the soul to feel the love and nurturing presence of a mother. Similar to the nutrient-rich colostrum found in mother's milk, myrrh oil inoculates individuals from the emotionally adverse and harmful effects of the world. Like the warmth of a mother's love for her child, myrrh assists individuals in feeling safe and secure. When the mother-child bond has been disrupted, the soul may lose its childlike ability to trust. Feeling of trust replaced with the feelings of fear and the belief that the world is unsafe. Myrrh assess, assists individuals in letting go of fear. Through re-establishing a healthy connection to the earth and to one's own mother, Myrrh rekindles trust with the soul, as the individual learn, learns to once again live in trust, confidence, the goodness of life returns, and the soul feels safe and more at home. Now, what's also coming through as well for me? I mean, Rachel was talking about, um, you know, connection to Mother Earth and the feminine. For me, because we've got the frankincense and myrrh, and this is the absolute not that one frankincense, um, which I didn't use, but I also I brought out to use, but I didn't actually go for it. Frankincense attaches to the masculine and the merge to the feminine, which also then brings in this yin and yang symbol, the symbol that I, I painted. And for me, it's also about the connection to the divine and to the Mother Earth. It's like so above, so below. And for me, it's also a way to close this ceremony as well, that all the chakras are now, if one, aligned through the painting, and that we have earth, myrrh connected to Earth and we have frankincense connected to the divine. And the two are really like the mother and father. So here we have it, the last of the the layers. And I would really love you to, you know, for all to put comments in the group on how you found this experience, how it helped you, what you would have liked probably to see more of, um, what part you like best, anything. I'd really love to hear and have your feedback and there we have it the last painting and well the last painting of the week thank you so much for being here and thank you for sharing this moment with me as well and I look forward to seeing you in the in the group thank you